Yo, welcome back to the Haunted Basement Studio. I'm your host, Triple Bs, and in this video, I'm going to be talking from Black. It's a movie that's out on Shudder right now, and this is a crazy demon story. It's pretty damn scary, so sit back, grab a drink, do whatever you need to do, and let's visit from Black. As a phone call comes through 911, you hear a girl whispering, I need to get out of here. I need to get out. The dispatcher is asking her, where are you at? He still could be here. The deputy now walks into the room where there is a circle of salt and blood in the middle of it and some bone fragments. She opens up the door to the bedroom and there's a couch covered in blood. Her name is Cora back at the police station. Cora now is in the interrogation room where she begins to say what happens. It all started when I met this man. First off, can you tell me whose blood's all over you? He told me we could get him back. Who told you? I really thought we could get him back. No, Cora, it's been seven years. Seven years ago, Cora gets a knock on her door and she's in a drug-induced slumber. She slowly opens up the door and the cops are outside asking her, do you know where your son is? She says, yes, of course I do. Yes, of course I do. What the fuck is this? We were just following up on a welfare check, ma'am. And now Cora's at a support group and Abel is talking. He's saying the pain of losing someone close to us feels unbearable. It's a feeling that no one else on planet Earth could possibly understand. And yet everyone in this circle has felt that way. For us to have the courage to sit in this room, to be here together for this kind of healing, that is the first step towards taking control back. Cora now says, today is his birthday, or it would have been. I really never shared here, I think because I thought that just about coming, I was somehow moving forward or working towards something, healing maybe, I don't know, looking for an answer to a question, I guess. I think I might just be kidding myself. There's probably no answer, but I search and I search for that thing you know, that little thing that just might help me or something help me to remember but there's just nothing i was just staying high and it's all i fucking wanted i didn't care what anybody did to me or anybody took from me as long as i was high so i promised myself that i would be sober when he came back to me and i have been sober for a very long time now i mean I don't even know how I'm supposed to act anymore, you know, or what am I supposed to feel? I mean, what am I supposed to do with all of this? Am I supposed to hold out hope? I mean, I'm a mother, right? What kind of mother would I be if I just gave up hope? And now back at the police station, Cora is talking with the deputy, Allison, who's actually her sister. Cora, I cannot do anything to help you unless you tell me what happened. Cora, let me help you. Hey, I really want to help you. There was this man. What? There was this man. And now Abel is at Cora's work and they are talking. He looks down at her chest and she says, what? Don't get weird. He says, no, it's your button. That's my little girl's favorite movie. It was Noah's too. You know, there's this theory, the entire story was that the male clownfish, you know, they eat their eggs, you know, to protect the nest, to make sure everyone's safe, and then turn around and start chop, chop, chop. The theory is that the dad ate all the kids, so he never really even ever had any more. So he goes on this journey, goes off searching for him, to ease his consciousness. That was dark. It actually means nobody in Latin. 
So the movie is actually called Finding Nobody. Are you okay? Abel's now at Cora's house and he is telling her, what if you can fix this? What if you can heal from this? What if you could see him again? Are you trying to be funny? What does that even fucking mean? Exactly what I said. Like some metaphysical bullshit? Like a seance? Something like that. Okay, I really appreciate your concerns, but I got things I gotta do. What do you have to do? I don't know. Things. Real tangible things that I can touch. Cora, I'm offering you a chance to undo this. You know what happened to me, right? You know I lost my little girl, but I got her back. What? She's alive. She's alive. I got her back. She's in Boston. I'm telling you, she's alive. She slams the door on him and tells him to leave. Abel got his daughter back from the place we go when we die. Later that night, Abel is out in his truck and Cora walks up and knocks on his window and she says, tell me. When they, when they pulled her from the water, you know, you know, she was blue. Fish have gotten to her. She being down there so long. She was still beautiful. It's not long after that a woman came to find me. She was. I, I still don't know. She started to tell me these things. What? I'm, I'm telling you. There is a way to get them back. Back from where? Wherever they go when they die. Cora says, I'm going to get in your truck because it's cold. But don't get weird. Just don't get weird. It's a ritual. Oh, like a seance? No. It's like a ritual, an old Mesopotamian or something. I swear on my life that I did this. I did this and it worked. You look, you know what happened to her. Everybody around here knows. They just know the same way that they know your story. But you know she is alive, don't you? You wouldn't be here. Now later on, Cora is preparing for the ritual. She stops for a second and looks down. And she says, what the fuck am I doing? And she continues to prepare the circle. She keeps hearing creaking coming from upstairs. She slowly starts to walk up the stairs. She looks down the hallway and then she walks into her son Noah's bedroom. Apparently where the noises was coming from. And this reassures her that she must do the ritual. Abel now shows up at Cora's house. And he says, look, I understand if you are not completely sold on this. But this, I need you to know right now. How committed are you? This, this is very real. And any deviation... And now Cora says, look, I'm sorry, but there's a damn shackle bolted to the floor. For Christ's sakes, all right, we should just call this off. What? No, this cannot be done halfway. No, no. I'm sorry. I agreed to this, and, and you are right. I'll do whatever you tell me to. I'll do whatever I need. I'm sorry. This is going to be very painful. I cannot stress that enough. It is something that you have never known, okay? We're gonna need to get you clean. I gotta tell you about the salt. The salt creates a protected layer, but it also absorbs all the negative energy. Okay, so once you soak in it, and then you rinse it off with clean water, all those impurities will go down the drain. Whoa, 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 what? It's for your protection. My protection? What does that even mean? Wait, you never told me that this fucking thing was for me. You're only going to need it for today. After this, it won't be necessary, I promise. You have to remember everything you're going through. 
I've done this and this just is how it works. Either trust me or you don't. Look, this part is the most physical demanding of you, especially because you are so irrelevant. And probably you know, but it was very important, critical to get all those impurities out of your system. You did exactly what you needed to do. Okay, okay, great. Let's just get the show on the road and tell me what I need to do. Nothing. Don't do anything. Just stand there and open and repeat exactly as I say. Stand only is very important. And do not get on your knees. And now Abel starts to read. We come of our own accord. We seek only that which is made available to us. Reject the natural order. Remove ourselves from the spiritual covering of life. And he begins mumbling the ritual over and over again. The day slowly turns to night. She is still standing in the circle of salt. She's strapped down by the shackle. Abel still is mumbling the ritual. Cora says, It's been hours. Can we stop? Abel, I need some water. Hey, come on. What the fuck? This is fucking bullshit. Nothing is happening. Abel, I am going to take this off right fucking now. God damn it. I'm not playing. I'm going to take this off. What the fuck? I swear to God, Abel, if you don't. Growling starts coming and the chain makes noise. Abel looks up and she is levitating off the ground. And the chain is holding her up from going all the way to the ceiling. Abel says, yes. And then she falls to the ground. Cora saying, oh my god, oh my god, holy fuck, what was that? I was floating, I was floating in air, oh my god, no, 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 I felt it, I felt it, it was like an energy in my chest, oh my god, it's real, real, I'm gonna hold my baby again, I'm gonna hold my boy again. Invitation. The next day both of them are in the circle doing another ritual. We seek to bring the dead back from the living. And then you hear whispering, has he come for you? He's coming for you. We say come. We say come. And the candle blows out. The next day, grief. We come of our own accord and we do what we will, not what we were told. Today we ask for grief. Today we ask for grief. Grief of the highest order. Grief of the highest order. Remnants for what we wish to receive. Water starts dripping from the ceiling and all of a sudden Noah appears from the dark with demon hands on his shoulders and as the hands slowly disappear into the dark and now we are going to see what happened to Noah the day that he disappeared Noah tries to wake up his mom who is passed out on the couch from using drugs she pushes him away and he grabs his backpack and puts it on and he looks at his mom sleeping on the couch He grabs his stuffed monkey animal and runs outside and he disappears into the woods behind the trailer park. There's an old playground with a merry-go-round swing. Noah's on it by himself and all of a sudden a man with a gray beard shows up behind him. Cora is watching this through an astral projection. She sees this but there is nothing that she can do. And then she looks down and she sees a van pulls up and stops. And Noah gets out running. And the man with the gray beard runs after him and grabs him and throws him in the back of the van. 
Cora is screaming on her knees. The demon appears behind her. And now she is astral projected to the room with a mattress laying on the floor and the stuffed monkey animal laying on it. And now she starts to walk down the hallway and there's a doorway open and as she gets closer to the door, the demon walks past. Her eyes are about to see what's inside this room. It's a bathroom and the man with the gray beard is drowning Noah. The demon grabs Cora from behind and says, The rules, child. Lest this be your last memory of him. She goes back to her body and Abel is looking at her in the circle. Parturushan, you ready? It's gonna show itself today. Remember, this is a barter, not a gift. We stay in the circle. If you forget everything else, remember, just stay in. We're gonna be fine. We're almost there and now. And now Cora straps Abel to the shackle and they repeat, we come of our own accord. Invitation has been extended. Grief is endured. We come of our own accord. Invitation has been extended. Grief is endured. We now offer the symbols of your arrival to us now. Come to us now from black, from black. And all of a sudden, Abel starts to scream and scrimmish and pain. He is groaning and his whole body is stretched out. He is gasping for air. He slowly starts to laugh as the demon lets go of him. He slowly turns over to Korra. He is breathing very heavily. He grabs the book of rituals and now he slowly hands it over to Korra and he drops it in the middle of the circle. And she looks at him and looks down at the book and all of a sudden he starts gasping again and now he's on his feet. She is slowly inching her way out of the circle. He starts spitting up bones and coughing up blood. Looking down at him, he starts pulling out tentacles and veins, pulling it out of his mouth. Cora is inching closer out of the salt circle. Abel's done coughing. He looks at her with black eyes and wrenches blood all over her face. She screams and breaks free and breaks out of the circle and she runs outside. Abel's in the circle with tentacles coming out of his mouth, shackled down in the circle. The demon starts to crawl out of his mouth. Cora is now outside sobbing, trying to catch her breath, trying to figure out what the hell just happened. She looks down at her hand and there's a cut on it and it is bleeding. Cora calms down and then she slowly walks back into the house, creeping her way up the stairs. And as she walks down the hallway to the open door where the circle is, she walks in and she sees Abel in the circle, laying there, passed out, presumed dead. The candles are still lit around the circle. One of them has fallen on the ground. She slowly reaches down to Abel with his eyes open. He all of a sudden turns to her and reaches out his hand and as she falls back, he is shackled in. He is trying to pull the shackle out of the floorboard with his own strength, which he does. You did this, he groans, you. He is gasping, he is crying, he is mumbling, you. He looks at her and he points at her and he reaches out and she's up against the wall by now. He gets dragged from behind by an invisible in He gets dragged behind by an invisible entity. As he screams, he is no longer seen again. Cora is now by herself in the room. She is gasping for air. As she stands up, what am I going to do? 
and she slowly starts to walk out of the doorway, but the demon appears behind her. Do you not wish to set eyes on him again? To once more savor that innocent scent? Your boy, Noah. Yes, yes, please. I'm so sorry. I'll do anything. I know you will, child. I know you will finish what you've begun. How? I'm all alone. You have all you need. And then a demon disappears behind her. And the book of rituals is left on the ground. And she picks it up and there's a picture of a portus. She now offers the goat up for sacrifice to the demon. The demon accepts. She must finish the ritual as she carves out symbols all around her in the circle. The demon says, come. I've done everything when do i see him come child to the circle for your boy she slowly walks over to the edge of the circle and she puts one foot in and then now she is in a field of green she is outside she is looking all around she is in a meadow of high grass she turns around and she sees abel there this is it. This is it, Cora. Day of payment. Where's Noah? Soon. They come upon a table. I am so sorry, Abel, as he reaches out his hand with a plate. She says, what is this? Just go with it. No, I want to see Noah. He pounds the table and he yells, play. Now first is the flesh, the second blood, the third bone. And he hands the plate over and says, eat. She's like, what? Eat so that Noah's flesh, blood, and bone can be made whole. She looks down at the plate and she grabs it and she starts to eat the flesh. And then she starts to gag, but he points at her and says, no. And then she grabs the blood and stuffs it in her mouth. And the bone follows. And now he pours a glass of blood and says, I give my payment for the gifts of my life. I carry the secret in exchange for my daughter. He brought back to the living. And though I did not see her again, I consider my payment just as fair. She looks down at the glass of blood. I don't think this is the last step, Cora. Drink. So that the ritual is complete. So when do I see him? I don't know. I don't know that. If you drink, Noah will be alive in the flesh. That's the accord. Drink it. She looks down at it. And she takes a big drink out of the glass. She drinks and the blood starts to flow down her chin. Abel yells, no. The woman who bestowed this gift upon me paid her price and I paid mine as has countless souls through millennia. You made clear this was worth the toll. So pay yours. You must carry you must carry the seeker to the next soul who needs it it is the way it is the only way did you fucking groom me and group you were just there looking for someone to pass this on to you ruined everything i offered you rebirth this is a divine gift in return, you took everything from me. You robbed me from seeing my little girl again. Because you can't follow simple fucking instructions. You, you fucking deserve this now. Now drink. Drink it. She says, fuck you. And then she drops the glass of blood on the ground. And... Abel yells no and then now she's back inside the circle she hurries and steps outside the circle and takes a deep breath in and the demon shows up right in her face and it is growling 
I own you. I will take back the prize of the boy. He will suffer without end. He will know nothing but pain and sorrow and despair till the end of all things. Please, no, you can't. There must be something. I must have a vessel. The payment is clear. That is the way. I can get you a vessel. I can. No games, girl. I can. She calls over her ex-boyfriend Wyatt, offers him sex and drugs. He falls for the bait and he slowly walks into the dark house. He makes his way into the ritual room. He looks down at the circle and says, what the fuck? He sees Cora with her back to him. The demon appears and grabs his forehead and starts to take him as the vessel. Cora turns around with a sadistic smile watching the demon growling the demon looks at her and says what is this girl i give you a vessel this vessel is tainted unclean she turns around and runs from the demon she goes to the front door but it is locked she runs into the kitchen and she grabs a big old bag of salt and then she runs to the doorway of the room where we first saw her in the beginning. She blocks the doorway with salt and then she shuts to the door. She slowly starts to walk backwards and sits down on the couch, looking straight at the door. Scratches, duds coming from the door, pounding. She starts to scream. The door is getting broken open. It is getting pounded over and over again. The door breaks through with Wyatt's head and now he is laying on the ground. The demon was using him as a battering ram. She reaches out and grabs the phone and plugs the landline back in and calls 911. Cora now is at the jail taking a shower, washing all the blood off of her. The deputy, her sister, was able to find Abel's daughter alive in Boston. She locks Cora in a jail cell. Cora's like, did you not hear one fucking word I said? It's coming. It's coming for me. It's like I left it out, Allison. I fucked the whole thing up. Don't leave me in here alone. That thing is coming for me. I let it out. I'm not going to let anything happen to you, I promise. Just try to get some sleep, she says, and I'll be back soon. Allison, no, it wants me to carry it. Allison, no, please. And then now Allison goes to the house and she walks in and she walks upstairs to Noah's bedroom. Cora now is in the jail cell by herself and the demon says, go child, sit and also let us reason. The lights go out of the jail cell and she sits down on the bed. Please, no, you hold the blood so that I may be flesh again. You endured grief, sweet, sweet grief. At last we forget pain. Let's not forget regret and don't also take residence within you. Does not a boy need its mother? We've come to end, child. There is no sanctuary to be had. Deliver me a broken soul. The boy calls to you. She looks up and she says, found Mr. Magoo and now Allison opens up the closet door to Noah's bedroom and he says boo He's standing there missing one shoe just like he did seven years ago cut credit scene the end All right, man, what'd you guys all think about that story? Pretty crazy demon story. You know, they had to they had to get the story right. And so they had to go like, 
a back in time piece. They show you what happens at the beginning of the movie and then they want to jump back in time and you can follow your way up to the beginning of the movie. I kind of really don't care for stories like that. I kind of like this to see how it unfolds from the get go, but it was all right. They had to do something. I didn't really care for them jumping back and forth though to the, to the cop station and back and forth. And then it was her sister. They really weren't that clear you know that she they were sisters because one time sister shows up she has curly hair was that was that not even her sister i don't know a little bit nitpicking but it did bring down the ranking a little bit but from black on shutter was an enjoyable movie i'm gonna give it a seven out of ten you know it means i watched it glad i watched it and uh yeah it's not too bad so you guys tell me what you think of from black in the comment section below give me your ranking or your thoughts and hit that thumb button on the way out of here triple b's out of the haunted basement studio laters